Today I'm going to talk to you about how to trace and transfer this to your canvas using tracing paper. And it's fairly easy, but there's a few tips that I'm going to share with you. Uh, one, it's probably good to have a light table. And this is a pretty cheap light table. Uh, nowadays they're LED, they're very slim. This one was about $30 on Amazon. Uh, they may be cheaper now, I don't know. Uh, you're also going to need tracing paper, and the best tracing paper that I have found is Canson's Vitalon Vellum. Uh, it's also probably the most expensive tracing paper <laughs> that's out there. But it's super translucent, and once I put the photo underneath it, you'll see what I'm talking about. Uh, it's very translucent. Uh, it doesn't have the splotchy parchment that traditional tracing paper has but it's also twice as thick as normal tracing paper too, so it holds up very well in tracing. Uh, there's uh, some other cheaper tracing paper that is equally translucent. Um, I wonder if I can get this out of the wrapper. It's probably pretty shiny. I also got this on Amazon. Let's pull out one of the sheets. Okay, so you can get a good look at this. Thickened tracing paper, translucent vellum. Let's take a look at one of these sheets and see how translucent it is also. It's probably equally translucent. And the thickness, uh, I would say, is feeling very much like the vellum, so it's going to be a lot cheaper. Uh, and I also, again, I got that on Amazon. It was pretty cheap. Okay, I have my tracing paper. I have my photo. Uh, there's some grid lines on my photo reference. That's for uh, drawing with a grid, and I'll talk about that in another video. But when I put my tracing paper on the photo, it's very important to tape it down. If you don't, if it moves ever so slightly, then anything that you trace after that movement is going to be off. So I'm just going to put two pieces of tape up here. So now it hinges so I can always look underneath to see information that might be too hard to see without it. And of course, the light table is going to help me see through in the dark spots. So look at that. Now I can see a lot of information. Uh, if you don't have a light table, uh, what you can do, and some of my students do, is they tape it to a window. And just the light coming from outside will help. And you can try that for a while. I have a tech pencil and a tech eraser that I'm going to use for if I make mistakes. And I'm just going to start tracing. Now the only lines that I'm going to be tracing are the retaining lines that uh, separate one section from another. So all the little individual feathers I'm not going to do, but the bird from the background I'm going to do, the bird from the uh, piece of wood that it's on top of. I'll separate those. The beak I'll probably separate, the eye I'll separate, but I try to keep it as simple as possible because as I start painting on this, a lot of those lines I'm going to paint over and they're going to disappear because they're not that important yet. Uh, what's also important other than the bird is the boundaries. So I have cropped this photo to an 11 by 14 format so it will fit on my 11 by 14 canvas. And that's real important to do that. So you're going to need some sort of simple photo program that will crop to the same size as your canvas. And because of that, it's going to be very important to then draw down the sides so you know how to position your tracing on the canvas. So I'm going to trace down these borders. Okay, the borders are traced. Now I am going into the bird. Nice dark line. I'm not worried about every little detail. I'm trying to keep it very simple, very technical. All of the little uh, variations in the feathers I'm going to do when I start painting it. 
to try to save all those variations during the painting process is impossible. They get wiped out when you start painting and this also gives me a little bit of a freedom if I don't do every little detail when I paint. Again, I'm just simplifying everything. these chest feathers. I'm just going to simplify that. Uh, there are these feathers. It looks like the wind's blowing and, and the feathers are getting ruffled here. Uh, it's 50-50 sometimes if I want to put those in or not. Uh, sometimes I'll just keep the wings very smooth as I trace. And then in the painting process, I'll just flick out some paint to make it look like uh, the wind is blowing the feathers and they are getting ruffled. Uh, but for now, I think I'll just trace them in, keep them very simple. Even though there's a lot of detail in them, I'm just keeping it simple. Okay, I'm getting very close to being finished with this drawing. One thing that I do, uh, I insert, let's get a white piece of paper under here, insert a white piece of paper under here, and then I can actually see the tracing that I've done so far to see or to make sure uh, that I haven't forgotten anything. I see a couple of lines here where the leg begins in the feathers in, so I'll probably go right in here and draw that in there. Again, you can see I didn't do all the little feather patterns in the painting. Uh, I want the freedom uh, to vary them a little bit if I have to. Uh, also, uh, they start to show through if they're not on the borders. right there might be good and that may be all I need I might do this where the outer feathers meet the tummy feathers okay I Think, oop, wait, I just see one more little line there between the wood, and that is not connected. Make sure everything's connected. Okay, that looks pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and now show you how to transfer it. Now I have my tracing right here. It was done on an 8 by 11 and a half piece of paper. And of course my canvas is 14 by 11 inch. And so uh, two things you can do. Uh, I can print out my photo reference to an 11 by 14 format and then get a larger piece of tracing paper and trace, which would be the easiest way to do it most direct. Or uh, I can scan this in on my scanner here and print it out on a larger piece of paper. So I went ahead and printed it out on a larger piece of paper. Uh, I know mo most of you don't have a large printer, and so you'll have to go down to Kinko's, someplace like that, to have it printed out. Or you can have the photo reference itself printed out to the actual size of your painting, and then do the tracing and transfer. And that's probably the best, cheapest way to do it, unless you have equipment. I'm going to go ahead and cut the top off.
because I trace down the borders, I know exactly how to place it on my canvas. So that's looking pretty good. And now I'm going to put some tape up here, just like what we did when we were transferring. And so I can hinge just like this and see what's going on. And that looks pretty good. I'm going to use some transfer paper now to transfer my tracing down to the board. So I'm going to be tracing again. The best transfer paper that I know is called uh, Serral Wax-Free Paper. Wax-Free is very important uh, because if you use wax transfer paper, you can hardly see the lines. It's very hard to see that. And so this is wax-free, so it's a little bit messier, but it's going to put down a darker line. And I have a piece right here that I'm going to use. The nice thing about the transfer paper is you can use it over and over and over again. So one little piece uh, will last me many times and it looks like I've done a few paintings with this one already. And it's still good. I'm going to slide this right underneath there so I can see exactly where my paper is and where my transfer paper is. I'm going to take my pencil and retrace over it. Usually at the beginning of a tracing, I make sure my lines are transferring down dark enough so I can see them. So I did a little line there. Let's see what it looks like. Okay, it's transferring really good. I'll also put a little tick mark where I'm starting to trace. That way I know where I began. Sometimes it's hard to know where you started. As I trace, the canvas weave of the fabric will try to push your pencil around a little bit. So you just have to be a little bit careful, go slower, knowing that some of these lines may wiggle a little bit when it hits uh, some of that canvas weave. Okay, I think I have all my lines down. They look pretty good. I'm going to take my tracing paper off and save that for maybe later if I need it. So now my drawing is looking pretty dark up against the white of the canvas. At least I think so. But once you put on your first initial wash onto the painting, even these dark lines may, may disappear. So I'm going to go back over my lines again to get them even darker. So I'll take my pencil and I'll do just the back of this head really quick and you can see the difference. Right away the difference between the two is quite uh, noticeable and uh, it's going to really help me out in the painting process. Now you don't have to use a technical pencil, you can use a number two uh, pencil. That's that regular yellow number two pencil that you see all the time, very cheap. Just keep it sharp. Uh, with the tech pencil here, I don't have to keep sharpening it. I just have to keep it fed out. Okay, I'm just putting my final lines down here, all the retracing, making sure that everything has a nice dark line on it. 
my canvas got a little scuffed up. Uh, I have graphite on the side of my hand and as I'm moving it around on my canvas, it smudges it up, but uh, it's no big deal. As soon as I start painting, all that goes away. But what I do need to do is I need to seal the drawing onto the canvas. Let's see. I'm going to use a special spray called Krylon Workable Fixative. Here's a shot of it. It is probably the most popular fixative out there for artists. And uh, you can find it at any art store. You can find it on Amazon. Uh, it's very popular. And I'm going to take it off now. You don't want to spray this stuff inside because it stinks and you don't want to be inhaling these fumes. So normally what I do is I go outside onto the back deck, spray it, and leave it outside for a good half hour. If you live in a very cold climate, and it's cold, it's winter time, uh, probably do a quick spray outside, leave it out there for five minutes, then bring it inside, maybe put it in a room that you're not gonna visit for a while, and let it finish drying. So let me go outside and spray it down. I'll be right back. Okay, uh, this is the back of my art studio space and it looks like an art studio. And this is my little spray booth that I have. So I am going to start spraying the Krylon Workable Fixative. Shaking it up really good. I don't want to be breathing this stuff. Uh, so usually I hold my breath until I'm inside and I've gotten really good at it. Uh, if you're not so good at holding your breath, you're going to need a respirator out here because you don't want to keep doing it and smelling it. So I'm going to stay about six inches away. I'm going to put down a horizontal layer and then I'm going to do a vertical layer at six inches away. And then that should be done. So watch me do this. Okay, I just brought the drawing in from outside. It's been sealed. No more odor, so you know it's good when it doesn't smell anymore. And uh, this is what it looks like. Let's get a nice overhead shot from this. If I were to start with an oil wash on my canvas, if I didn't seal this, the lines would start to disappear right away and then uh, you'll be very, very sorry. So uh, that's how you trace and transfer down an image to a board.